Now let's discuss the fashion in the 1940s and 1950s. In the 1940s, women's clothes were modeled after the utility clothes produced during the war because of the fabric shortage. Utility or victory suits were popular and remained popular even after the war. Blouses with padded shoulders and skirts that ended below the knee were the biggest trend for women. Due to the absence of men who went to fight in the war, women once again began filling in their roles. This is when pants for women first gained popularity. Companies started producing pants more fitted for women, but still very masculine. High-waisted with buttons or zippers down the side, full legs with wide cuffs made from cotton, wool, or denim blends. Later, women started wearing them for fun and it became casual wear. Eventually, overalls and coveralls also became popular. Fashion for women in the 1950s were still skirts. The most iconic look for teenagers of the 50s would be poodle skirts decorated with cats, squirrels, and so much more. They were also worn by older women but with more mature designs such as the Eiffel Tower. Other types of popular skirts included pencil skirts, which were tight and slim so it was hard to walk in. Petticoats were worn for fullness and full skirts were worn to hide big hips and made waist look much smaller. Again, the length was important. It was mid-calf or longer for evening wear. The 50s also consisted of fashionable eyewear, matching purses, shoes, hats, and jewelry. Hats such as berets and small caps were popular in the beginning of 1950s, but later went out of style because exaggerated hairstyles became popular near the end of 1950s. Other major changes to female fashion was that shoulders were soft rather than squared off, and more hourglass figures over boxy figures. Women's appearance was crucial at the time because it was linked to their husband's success. Let's move on to men's fashion. In 1940s, men's fashion was also shaped by the shortage of clothing. Men's clothing were muted. Colors such as black, navy, gray, dark brown, tan, and medium blue were common. During the summer, lighter fabric colors were medium gray, brown, medium blue, and tan. Tweed, herringbone, check, and over plaids were some of the very popular suiting patterns. White chalk stripes especially was a classic 1940s suit pattern. As for the trousers, they were 19 inches around or cuffed. And the shirt lengths were short by today's standards and were tucked in. And as for the casual clothing, that included knit sweaters, vests, and pullovers. Cardigans with a V-neckline and buttons down the middle were popular. The Hawaiian Aloha shirts were also a thing after the war, untucked and worn rather loose. The accessories included a crazy pattern tie. The crazier the tie, the better. Bow ties were also worn around this time, but weren't as popular. These were also the time for suspenders, but belts were slowly gaining popularity. Coats as well as jackets were a part of the male fashion in 1940s. Trench coats, bomber jackets, knit undershirts, peak coats, chino coats, overwool coat, and gabardine jackets. Men's fashion also included hats. The fedora, homburg, and the pork pie hats were famous. Straw hats in any of these forms were also popular for the hot weather. As for the shoes, lace-up oxfords was the most popular type of shoe. Most men chose to wear the more sporty oxfords that were two-toned, brown and white shoes. Almost converse-like shoes with thicker soles were popular. Lastly, for male fashions in the 1940s, we have sock garters. They were wrapped around the calf and were worn to keep socks up. Now let's move on to 1950s male fashion. Development of synthetic fibers led to lower priced clothing and durability. Men's fashion that was apparently approved and was considered appropriate was the Ivy League or preppy look for the teens. This look consisted of loose-fitting slacks, an iron shirt, sports jacket, polished shoe with a short and neat haircut. The most iconic leather jacket, white shirt with jeans and slicked back hair with essence of rebellion was famous among the teens who embraced rock and roll. However, there were still men who wore suits on a daily basis. A few trends that arose in 1950s would include fabrics with textures in business and casual. Small changes to the suits included no shoulder pads. The colors expanded past blues, browns, and grays. Also, pleated pants became out of style and started to become narrower, no cuffs. And as for the shoes, they became almond shaped in the front, slimmer, and the most popular tone was brown. The two-tone look became only for sportswear. Most of these trends have disappeared, like the sock garters. However, some trends have developed, like jeans for women are still alive and have only gotten skinnier. And as for the men, not many wear suits and dress shirts on a daily basis unless it's linked to their job. If fashion from now and then are compared, many differences can be found, but we still take inspiration from the 1940s and 50s, which allows fashion to grow and change as time goes on.